If you're it's Emily Fox, today's video is going to be kind of a wrap up slash what I'm currently reading. So the books I read finished in June, five of them, which <laughs> are we noticing that things are looking up for my reading slump? Uh, again, should, should not be saying that too loud. Uh, and then the ones I started and I have yet to finish, but hopefully again, July will go very well. It seems like my TBR should be interesting. <laughs> So let's go through the books. Uh, first off, so the first book I finished was an audiobook and it was Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid. Um, this, was it part of the Goodreads reading challenge? I feel like I've just seen that book a lot, like everywhere. I feel like I've seen it on like book clubs and like list everywhere of like, oh, new books you absolutely need to read. So I was a little skeptical, but went into it pretty hopeful. Things went well. Um, this is a contemporary, like a doll contemporary. Um, you're following Amira. Um, she's a young black woman. Uh, I think she lives in New York. <laughs> yes, I think so. Why do I never remember these details? Um, and she uh, is struggling to uh, make enough money to survive, but one of her job is to be a be babysitter for this white family, rich white family. And one day she is bringing the kid to the grocery store, a fancy one, and people are accusing her of kidnapping the kid. And uh, someone is also filming the encounter and there's this whole controversy about it. She just wants to forget about it, but people wanting to help her just won't let it go. And there's, you know, a bunch of drama happening. I enjoyed the relationship between her and the kid and her and uh, some of her friends. Uh, it's pretty much about white privilege. It was an interesting read, but my only issue that I want to mention is the ending. I'm going to keep it super vague to keep it spoiler free, but I feel like that character at the end, uh, they could have been left more gray. That's going to be my only thing. If someone wants to discuss it in the comment section, like I'll just put spoiler and we can talk about it. Uh, but yes, overall a good book. It's not my usual cup of tea. I feel like I don't read that many contemporary, but I can see why it was popular. As an audiobook, it was great. I felt like it was very readable. Uh, so it was very easy for me to go through it. Slash, I think it's only 10 hours long. And I feel like every audiobook I've been listening to this year were like 30 hours. So it was refreshingly quick. So yes, uh, a good read, just not necessarily what I'm used to slash what I usually enjoy. So I'm gonna give it like a 3.5 stars. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just based on my enjoyment. So that was that. For my reading vlog for Pride Month, I finished two books. The first one was this one, which is This Is How You Lose a Time War, which I had been really looking forward to reading because it is a sci-fi slash woman loves woman. A story which I'm always on the lookout for more of them and I feel like sci-fi in that it's a weird mix that you don't see often and the reviews were so mixed so I had no idea how things would go I have to say the writing is very flowery the story is very character driven so you're either gonna love it or hate it personally I was kind of on the fence I did go through it back and forth with the audiobook I feel like audiobook was probably the way to go for me uh, because the writing style otherwise because of the slump it was a little heavy Two time traveling agents are fighting each other while kind of falling in love and writing each other letters. They have to keep it a secret. And uh, it's very, very strange, but not necessarily in a bad way. I just, I have no clue how I feel about this book really because it's so strange, but um, at the same time, it was very beautiful. I feel like I went back and looked at some reviews and everyone is kind of left confused. Either they absolutely love it or they're just like, hating it or just like me just no idea how they feel about it so an interesting story I completely understand though why people love it or hate it <laughs> if you have read this please comment because I want to talk about it I have still no clue I finished it a week or two ago two weeks ago and I'm still just I don't know <laughs> weird reading month you're gonna notice the next book though I gave five stars to I don't do that often especially this year it's been pretty rough um wow Wow. To be thought if fortunate by Becky Chambers. This is my fourth book by her. And this is by far my favorite. It's a standalone, so please pick it up. It's 140 pages. You won't regret it. It is a sci-fi, obviously. It was part of my uh, vlog once again for Pride Month slash, I wanna mention there's some great representation in there. Uh, obviously no one is actually like really labeled. They're not saying it themselves. So we're just gonna put a possibly in front of everything, but possibly a trans character, lesbian character, bisexual character, and asexual character. So like out of the four characters in there, definitely great representation. So that was nice. Uh, and it's also just there in the story, which I feel like I want to read more books like that. So that was nice. So you're following uh, four 
astronauts basically uh, being sent to explore, is it four or five different planets? How did I already forget this? I think it's like three planets and one moon. Am I crazy? Um, <laughs> I want to mention at the beginning of the book because first off, it starts by, please read this. And then the first sentence is, if you read nothing else we've sent home, please at least read this. How can I not read this? Uh, it's a very character driven story also. And uh, you're basically following them, especially that one main character, um, as they go and explore and try to find life on these different planets. And they are sending back the data. And since it starts that way, you know something happened, but you have no clue and you're just curious to follow them and like figure out what happened towards the end. Obviously not gonna spoil it because again, very short too. Uh, but it was just so well written. The characters were just attaching. The story was intriguing. There is some science, especially towards the end, but I feel like it's well explained slash the author kind of mentions like, you're probably gonna skip this, but uh, I thought it was fascinating and I just don't wanna say anything else because I feel like you would benefit from going into it pretty blind. But if you enjoy uh, astronauts, space, sci-fi, or just great representation, definitely would recommend this book. It was just, I, I'm gonna reread this. I don't reread books often, but I will absolutely 1000% reread this. I highly recommend you check it out. Again, five stars from me. So, <laughs> I'm describing my books very poorly this month, but I feel like a lot of them just left me without anything to say, which is kind of weird because I usually always have a lot of stuff to say, so it will stick with me forever. Um, next, oh, the next one, I had no idea how things would go and I, I still am a little bit on the fence. I read Red, White and Royal Blue, which is a, people are saying adult, non, non new adult, whatever, uh, romance, which I know, I know. Uh, this was part of my Goodreads reading challenge. I feel like a lot of people were, telling me don't read romance, but everyone was raving about this book and I really wanted to see how things would go. It's also a uh, men loves men uh, story, which being, you know, June Pride Month, I wanted to try and read like a third one if possible. And I went through it as an audiobook, So I had the time for it. I, you're following the son of the uh, president of the United States and then a prince from the UK, which there's it's this uh, enemy to lover romance, which I, enjoy, weirdly enough. Um, but I don't feel like they were that much of enemies, but whatever. Um, I don't recommend the audiobook if you're like me and you get secondhand embarrassment very easily because, oh my God, the sex scenes were so freaking cringy, I could not deal. Um, but it was very easy to like read. I feel like I didn't need to like some of the other books that I'm reading. I feel like I have to be like 100% focused on the book, otherwise I miss a ton. And this is just like a very easy book that I can go on a walk and listen to, you know, it's like no big deal. Uh, very easy to go through, but I, romance, I'm very, very difficult. There aren't that many books I ended up enjoying that were, you know, romance heavy. So it was one of those things that I'm like, I did it. It was fine, you know, I, I don't hate it except the sex scenes. And I can understand why people would love it or hate it. I'm just indifferent. <laughs> Next book, I'm definitely not indifferent, and it is uh, Nickel Boys, which, uh, again, part of actually my reading <laughs> my reading challenge from Goodreads. It feels like I'm really trying to like achieve that goal, but it's just because they were all my waiting list uh, from my library, so I'm like going through them and just, you know, they were books that I wanted to get to. Um, this one is in the historical fiction uh, category, which I don't read a lot of, and it's because usually they just hurt. <laughs> Like, I don't read to cry. I feel like we've already been through this. Uh, we're dealing with enough, you know, stress right now. Uh, but I didn't realize it was actually like historically, you know, kind of accurate, which kind of is pretty messed up, not gonna lie. You're following, why am I so bad with names? Elwood. I really need to like get it together with names. Elwood, uh, a young white man who uh, is kind of falsely accused of stealing a car and he's sent to this academy, the Nickel Academy. And there's a lot of basically torture, physical and psychological torture happening there. And um, the weirdest thing is that because I was listening to it as an audiobook, it felt like it was happening, you know, so long ago, but then, you know, there's a few timelines and then at the end, it's like some of these characters are like adult and you realize Shh, it's in our present time, that part. So like they were just younger. And it's one of those situations where it's like, wow, you know, these things happened not that long ago. It's pretty messed up. I definitely felt for the characters quite a bit. Um, I don't want to reveal too much because again, it's a very short book. I think it was like about six hours as an audiobook. So you can easily go through it. Uh, very attaching characters, especially Elwood. You really feel for him. And 
yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. There are some like twists, some great information, some difficult parts to read. Uh, but again, it's one of those books that once again, I don't know how to rate this. Like it was horrifying yet good. <laughs> but also not my usual cup of tea. So I uh, definitely understand the hype. I feel like a lot of people have been talking about it. So uh, if you were intrigued, I do recommend you check it out. Now let's go through the books I'm currently reading because I have three right now to talk about. So I have mentioned in my July TBR that I wanted to continue slash finish this series. This is the Remembrance of Earth Fast. <laughs> uh, the third book being That's End, which I, I just, I want to know. This is a very science-heavy uh, sci-fi, which some of you have started reading the three-body problem where you're telling me you weren't joking. I know, very, very science-heavy. I'm currently 17% into it through the audiobook. I go back and forth with the physical and uh, ebook, audiobook. And uh, yeah, I've listened to five hours out of like 29 hours. So I'm not super far into it, but it's starting a little bit faster than the other books. Usually like the first half is like super slow. You have no idea where things are going. Uh, in this case, you go back in time, like you kind of skipped ahead in the book two and you go back. So it's like, okay, like where is this gonna go? But they're starting to explain some stuff. Again, spoiler free. Um, but yes, I'm intrigued. There's still a bit of sexism, which is kind of annoying, but um, I just want to know how it's gonna end. <laughs> it's first contact with aliens, which we all know at this point, I'm totally obsessed with. And I been told that the third book is good, so. 17% into it. I have like two more weeks to go through it. So it means I'm going to have to like get my together. Usually it takes me like getting the book twice from my library to go through it, but we're going to try to attempt to not do that this month. Just finish it. You can do it. So yes, so far so good, but you know, I have like very mixed feelings about this series overall. Totally recommend it though. Uh, the book that wasn't in my TBR for July, because I was hoping it was tough time to finish it, but you know, life. Um, I'm definitely still reading it. Don't worry, it will happen. I will finish this eventually. This is The Way of Kings by Brendan Sanderson. I'm about like 600 pages into it. In my defense, I was stuck at like 300 and something for like weeks because the slump was killing me. The good news is that I am reading physical books pretty much every day. It started like slowly with like 10 pages, but now I'm reading like 50 pages a day. So I'm definitely finishing this in uh, July. I'm very excited. I'm truly enjoying this. It was just, you know, the slum distress life. We all get it at this point. Uh, I absolutely adore, can I pronounce it French? Caladin, whatever. His character is just so likable. And I just, I like the magic system. So far, I'm really enjoying the world building. And I just want to know how it's going to end because we all know Brandon Sanderson. He has like endings that just blow your mind. I'm obviously not that close to it because there's exactly a thousand pages, actually, a thousand and one pages. But uh, I am just, I'm fascinated. Yeah, let's let's stop here. Uh, if you were still wondering, you know, if it was worth it so far, I'm definitely feeling that this is going to be five stars. But most of the time it is with him. So love this so far, but, you know, got to just sit down and actually read it. And I wanted to, I don't know if it's going to be the last one, but possibly the last book that I'm currently reading. I wanted to mention it because The Girl in the Stars by Mark Lawrence, which is the first book in the Ice series. So um, at this point, I know a lot of people have commented about it on the videos I had pre-filmed and posted pretty much when this was happening. Uh, there's been some controversy online on Twitter. There always is, right? I feel like people should just stay away from Twitter. Not people, I mean like authors and brands because there's always like, th why do you not let me love you? Um, so there's been some accusations against him being not so great. And I've seen tweets of him calling women females, which that, why? I, can we just all agree to never call a woman female? Like it just, um, so yeah, I'm kind of torn here. I'm planning on like reorganizing my shelves right as I am done with this video. And I am wondering if I should just unhaul some of his books. I truly love the Ancestor trilogy. I'm gonna keep it because, you know, I truly enjoy it. I'm probably gonna stop recommending it all the time though because I can't. Uh, I had been warned that his older stuff, like this specific series was very difficult to read because the main character is like a evil guy and he's a rapist and apparently it's very sexist. So I hadn't picked it up because of that. Um, but I will finish this book because I'm currently like, 50, 60 something pages into it. And I had been dying to read this. I'm just gonna finish it because I'm, I don't know. I just, 
I don't know if I'm gonna keep reading more of the series or just keep I will most likely not continue afterwards and probably won't be supporting the author anymore because of that but yes I kind of just wanted to mention that I know I'm incredibly disappointed too and so many yeah but yeah so that's where I'm at I heard you I agree I thought this video was going to be quick uh, it was a bit longer than expected uh, I think this is what I'm currently reading. <laughs> it's probably gonna change quickly because things are finally moving faster. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs up, subscribe, let me know in the comment section if you have read any of these books, what you thought about them so we can discuss them because I feel like my reading month, although I've been reading, a lot of these books I'm like kind of torn. I don't have that much to say about them. I'm just like, I read them, I understand it now, but like I have no feelings or just complex feelings about them that just can't come out. So uh, yeah, thumbs up, subscribe, more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out. Keep an eye out for some very exciting videos coming your way. Uh, July should be fun. Again, my challenge is to read some French classics in French, which uh, my French is getting rusty. That's going to be fun. But at least uh, we all know at this point. Uh, Alexandre Zuma is very easy to read in French. I know a lot of people were like scared, but like if you understand French, don't be scared. He's like, he's not like the equivalent in English. Like when I'm trying to read like English for first time, I tried to read some Jane Austen way too complex. I feel like Alexandre Zuma is just way easier to go through. So if you can read, you know, some pretty decent French, you can totally read uh, The Count of Monte Cristo without any problems. So yes, we'll see you soon. Bye.